See, I need the goddamn pump right now. You hear me? You ain't turning that back on. Whatever you're thinking, we think it. The movie opens with a notorious biker gang called the Outcasts pulling up to a bar they covertly use to make large batches of meth. Among them is Phil Broker, an undercover Interpol narcotics agent who has infiltrated the gang and gained the trust of their leader, Danny T, becoming his right-hand man. Broker is responsible for setting up drug shipments and handling deals. He makes a call to arrange a plane for the next delivery. At this point, Danny's son Jojo arrives, clearly under the influence, and insists on transporting the shipment by land instead. However, Danny trusts Broker's decisions more and chooses to stick with his plan. Outside the building, DEA agents have the place surrounded, waiting for the right moment. In an instant, they catch the bouncers off guard and rush inside. A fierce gunfight breaks out and the lab begins to catch fire. Broker takes off his biker mask and joins the fight alongside his team. He exchanges fire with Danny T, but when he notices that a fellow agent is injured, Broker chooses to save him, giving the gang leader a chance to escape with his son. Broker quickly jumps on a bike and takes off after them while the DEA chief calls for backup. The pursuit doesn't last long as Danny soon runs into a police roadblock and is forced to turn around. This is where Broker fearlessly races head on towards the gang leader's car. At the last moment though, he leaps off his motorcycle, sending it sliding toward the vehicle and then shoots the gas tank, causing a massive explosion that brings Danny T and Jojo to a halt. Danny T is quickly captured by Broker while furiously calling him a rat but Jojo's situation unfolds differently. Although he's surrounded by cops, Jojo, still under the influence of meth, feels no fear and shows no intention of surrendering. Eventually, Broker has no choice but to shoot Jojo in the leg, but Danny's son still tries to grab his gun and this is a green light for the cops to shoot. With Jojo down, Danny T directs his rage at the person who betrayed them. He threatens Broker and promises to take revenge on him and his family. Fast forward two years, and the movie shifts to a school playground where Broker's daughter Maddie is playing by herself. A larger boy named Teddy Klum approaches her and starts to bully her, snatching her hat and shoving her to the ground. Maddie warns him twice to stop and give her hat back, but the boy just taunts her. When Teddy tries to push her again, Maddie swiftly defends herself, knocking him down, grabbing her hat and leaving him on the ground with a broken nose. Broker has recently moved to this small town in Louisiana. After years of service in different departments and closing his final case, Broker has resigned from the force. Now he runs a contracting business with his friend, Tito. While having some woodwork with him, Broker gets an urgent call from Maddie's school and rushes over. Once there, he sees what Maddie's perfect performance has produced. In the principal's office, Teddy's parents demand action, especially his drama queen mom, Cassie Bodine, who always seems to need a sheriff around. She calls Broker and his daughter by not-so-pleasant names and even tries to attack the man but gets taken away by the sheriff. Soon the school psychologist Susan Hatch introduces herself to Broker. They see Maddie and she explains how Teddy was trying to bully her. What makes Susan wonder is how a little girl could defend herself so well. Broker simply replies that he has taught Maddie how to protect herself. As they continue talking, Susan learns that Maddie's mother passed away a year ago. Since Maddie's mom grew up in this town, Broker thought it would be the best place to raise his daughter. Cassie has been waiting outside for Broker, determined not to let him off so easily. She sends over her husband Jimmy to confront him. The man demands that Broker apologize to his son, further insulting Maddie. Despite the tension, Broker stays calm and tells Jimmy to relax. But when he makes a move, Broker reacts quickly, knocking him to the ground and pushing his face into the dirt, embarrassing him in front of his family. The sheriff quickly steps in to break up the fight and assures Broker afterward that he won't face any legal trouble. The sheriff is impressed by Broker's fighting abilities and tries to learn more about him, but Broker doesn't feel legally obligated to respond, instead apologizing for the incident before leaving with his daughter. As Cassie walks away, she gives Broker a threatening stare that suggests she's holding a grudge. While they're on their way, she starts to insult Jimmy, calling him a coward and trying to humiliate him. Jimmy tries to explain that he only lost his balance, but Cassie keeps up the harsh words. She threatens to get her brother involved while he insists they should keep it a personal matter within the family. In the next scene, we meet Cassie's brother, Gator Bodine. He bursts in on a group of four young drug users who are making meth. 
Without a second thought, he swings his bat and hits one of them hard, demanding they stop making the drug for good. Even though they insist that it's just for personal use and not for selling, Gator forces them to leave and threatens to burn them alive if he catches them again. At first, he appears to be someone who wants to keep drugs out of the town. However, the truth is that Gator cooks meth himself and uses informants to track down and scare off small-time drug producers, making sure he doesn't have any competition in the area. When Gator gets home, he finds Cassie waiting for him. She tells him about the situation with Broker and asks Gator to teach him a lesson, but that's not all. She also asks Gator for some drugs. Gator agrees, but warns her to keep her addiction under control. Meanwhile, over at Broker's house, he praises Maddie for her fighting skills before saying goodnight, telling her he's proud of the way she stood up for herself. Later, Maddie asks her dad what he thinks of Susan, the school psychologist, hinting that they both like her, of course, in different ways, though. The next day, Broker and Susan have a brief chat at school. During their conversation, Broker mentions that Maddie likes Susan and asks if she could help him plan Maddie's upcoming birthday. Susan happily agrees, but also suggests that Broker make peace with Jimmy and Cassie, worried that things could get worse, especially since he's new in town. Taking her advice to heart, Broker heads over to Jimmy's workplace next. Once there, he apologizes to Jimmy and his family, hoping this will finally resolve the issue. After leaving on good terms, Broker pulls into a gas station to refuel his car. Suddenly, a couple of Gators men show up to bully him, demanding to use the pump before he's finished. When he refuses to step aside, one of them switches off the pump. Whatever you're thinking, we think it. Rethink it. He wants me to rethink it. He warns them to back off, but they don't listen and even threaten him. Broker ignores them and proceeds with the refueling, but then they suddenly attack, making Broker let his inner beast out. After the fight, he demands to know who sent them, but they don't give him any details. On their way home from school, Maddie notices that Broker's hand is injured. Even though he says he got the scratches while working, Maddie has a feeling he isn't being honest. Afterwards, the sheriff shows up and pulls Broker over. He tells the latter they've received a report about an incident at the gas station and wants to hear his side of the story. As usual, Broker stands firm, saying there's nothing to discuss unless an official complaint is made. This response only raises the sheriff's suspicions further. He warns Broker that he's keeping an eye on him. While Gator's busy in his lab, he gets a call informing him what Broker did to his men. Furious, he decides to handle the situation himself. He heads over to Broker's house, arriving just as Broker and Maddie are leaving for a horseback ride. Once they're gone, Gator punctures one of Broker's car tires and sneaks inside. Upon reaching Maddie's room, he picks up one of her bunny dolls. He then heads to a storage area and discovers some documents. Hearing footsteps approaching, Gator grabs the files and hides in the basement where he comes across Maddie's little kitty. Later that night, Maddie realizes that her beloved kitten and her bunny doll are missing. While looking for them, Broker notices his car tire is flat. He keeps looking and soon he finds the bunny doll, but it has been cut and tied to a tree, clearly indicating that someone is trying to send a message. In the meantime, Gator is going through the files and discovers that Broker is an Interpol narcotics officer, has a history with the outcasts, and was involved in the undercover mission that led to JoJo's death and Danny T's arrest. With an idea in his head, Gator calls his ex Cheryl, who has connections to the outcasts. Once they meet in the morning, Gator shares Broker's history with her. He plans on giving Broker to Danny T in exchange for his meth being distributed across all of Danny's territories. Although Cheryl warns him that the outcast can't be trusted, Gator insists she meet with Danny's lawyer to make the deal. He tries to convince Cheryl by suggesting they go into business together, but the latter is still hesitant because she knows how risky dealing with the outcasts can be. In the next scene, Broker approaches Jimmy and warns him to stay away from his house, thinking he was the one behind the damages. When Broker gets back home, he gives Maddie a new doll to replace the missing one, and they start planning to invite her entire class to her birthday party. Later that night, Cheryl meets up with Danny's lawyer and hands over a file with Broker's details, calling it a gift for Danny. The lawyer takes it to Danny, who becomes enraged when he sees Broker's photo and orders his lawyer to do whatever it takes to bring him down. The following day, Broker and Maddie meet up with Teddy and Cassie to make amends. During their conversation, Maddie invites Teddy to her birthday party and Cassie appears to have put the past behind her. 
Later, while working with Tito, Broker tells him that someone broke into his house, but Tito assures him that it couldn't have been Jimmy. Instead, he mentions Jimmy's brother-in-law, Gator, saying that while he pretends to be a boat mechanic, he's actually involved in cooking meth. Tito also tells Broker about a cafe where Gator hangs out. At the birthday party, there are many guests present, making the day feel cheerful and lively. Maddie seems to be happy as she watches her dad chatting and flirting with Susan. On the other hand, the outcasts show up to meet Cheryl. The group is led by a badass named Cyrus Hanks. When he finds out that Cheryl is trying to make a deal and wants distribution in return, he refuses right away and threatens to kill her if she doesn't take him to Broker immediately. Later that night, Broker reaches out to the DEA chief to gather some information on Gator. The chief tells him that Gator has been arrested multiple times but never convicted. He also shares some details about Gator's ex, Cheryl Mott, who used to be a biker groupie and was once caught smuggling for Danny T. Broker heads to the cafe Tito told him about. He sees Tito and he shows him where Gator and Cheryl are sitting. Broker walks up to their table and accuses Gator of breaking into his house, slashing his car tire and taking Maddie's cat, calling it a cowardly move. He also warns Gator that there will be serious consequences if anyone else shows up at his place. Gator, however, denies having anything to do with it. As Broker is leaving, he receives Cheryl's file and realizes that she was the one sitting with Gator. Broker arrives at Gator's place, which is disguised as a boat repair shop, and starts looking around. He discovers various items used for making meth along with some already processed meth. Broker then sets up bomb traps using chemicals from the lab, rigging them to explode when the lights are switched on. While leaving, he spots Maddie's cat, and just as he tries to pick it up, one of Gator's men appears and points a gun at him. Broker quickly reacts, disarming the man and knocking him down. The cat runs away and as Broker goes to grab it again, he gets hit in the head and instantly passes out. After Broker wakes up, he finds himself tied up and held by the thugs from the gas station. They begin to torture and taunt him, hitting him hard and dunking his head underwater to get back at him for what happened earlier. Even though his hands are tied, Broker's anger flares up when they threaten his daughter and he starts attacking them with all his strength. Broker manages to free himself using a circular saw and handles the thugs with no trouble. After bringing Maddie's kitty back home, Broker realizes this town is no longer a good place to stay, so he starts packing to move out. Meanwhile, Cyrus, his gang, and Cheryl show up at Gator's place. Cyrus tries to convince Gator to guide them personally, but Gator refuses, so Cyrus takes Cheryl instead. The bikers and Cheryl head to Broker's house to kill Broker and his daughter, while Gator sticks close to the sheriff to create a solid alibi since he knows he'll be a suspect in Broker's murder. Tito has arrived to pick up the horses, but soon notices the animals acting uneasy. Trusting their instincts, he senses that something's not right. Meanwhile, the gangsters have reached the edge of Broker's property. When they hear a horse neigh, they send one of their men to check the stable. As the man looks around, Tito jumps on him out of nowhere and the two begin to fight. The man eventually knocks Tito down, but before he can retrieve his gun, Tito grabs a garden fork and stabs him. Broker is in the middle of packing when the bikers get closer to the house. Tito frantically honks his truck's horn to alert Broker, but one of the gangsters notices him and shoots him. Hearing the horn, Broker urgently calls for Maddie. With the house now surrounded, he takes her down to the basement, hands her a cell phone, and instructs her to stay put and call 911. Broker moves back up, grabs a shotgun, and prepares to face the attackers. Two men charge toward the front door, and as they kick it open, Broker doesn't hesitate to fire, hitting one and knocking him over. A fierce exchange of gunfire breaks out. Maddie is startled by the gunshot and gasps, which exposes her hiding place. She runs for safety, heading into the woods while one of the bikers chases after her. Meanwhile, being by the boat, Cheryl hears too many gunshots and frantically calls Gator, telling him that everything has gone out of control. Back at the house, the shootout continues until all of Cyrus's men are taken down. Cyrus has cornered Broker behind a pillar, attempting to catch him off guard by switching positions around a car. But Broker sees through the trick and manages to wound Cyrus by shooting out the car's headlight. Wasting no time, he goes after Maddie through the woods and notices a thug on her tail. Just before the man can fire his weapon, Broker shoots him first, saving Maddie from certain death. However, the relief is short-lived. Cyrus suddenly shows up and attacks Broker while Maddie escapes to safety. The fight begins, but Cyrus has no chance against Broker and soon becomes a punching bag for the latter. He attempts to put Broker in a headlock, 
but Broker counters by lifting and slamming him to the ground. The biker even pulls out a knife, but it backfires when Broker takes it away and uses it to kill him. After escaping, Maddie reaches the riverbank and finds Cheryl waiting there. She asks Cheryl for help, but instead, the woman ends up forcing her into a cage and taking her away. Broker arrives just a moment too late, furious as he watches his daughter being kidnapped by Cheryl. The police finally show up at the scene and Broker fills the sheriff in on the situation. Then he notices that Tito is injured and calls for paramedics. Broker practically takes over, instructing the sheriff to trace the cell phone that Maddie's carrying and to send a helicopter to search for his daughter. Shortly after Cheryl and Maddie reach Gator's house, Maddie decides to call her dad and describe their location. When Broker hears her description, he quickly figures out where they are and takes off driving there. Gator arrives at his lab to find out what's going on. But when Cheryl tells him how badly things have gone and that she brought Maddie along, he becomes furious. You brought the kid here? Are you retarded? He scolds her for bringing a witness, then grabs his gun, ready to kill Maddie. Just as he's about to go through with it, Cassie and Jimmy show up at the place and ask if Gator knows anything about the recent shootings. Nervous about facing Broker's wrath, Cassie brings up Maddie's disappearance and presses Gator to see if he's involved. Gator denies knowing anything, but then Maddie's screams echo from inside. Cassie hurries to check, turning on the lights, but this accidentally triggers Broker's traps, causing an explosion that destroys the lab. Cassie tries to help Maddie escape, but Gator moves in to stop her. During their struggle, Gator's gun suddenly goes off, accidentally hitting his sister in the stomach. No one knows what Gator's thinking as he grabs the kid and speeds away. Just as he's leaving, Broker shows up and starts chasing him down the highway. Broker tries everything he can to rescue Maddie, but Gator drives faster. Hoping to stop Gator, the sheriff tells his men to open a bridge in his path, yet Gator makes it across just in time. When Broker attempts to cross too, his car crashes and flips over. Gator finally stops and steps out, heading toward Broker. The sheriff orders his men to hold their fire because Maddie's on the bridge. As Gator gets ready to shoot Broker, Maddie steps out, pleading with Gator not to kill her father. Broker seizes the moment, getting out of the car and hitting Gator hard. He strikes him repeatedly before pressing a gun down to his head, ready to end it. But when he looks at Maddie, he changes his mind and tells Gator it's Maddie who saved his life. Broker lets him go and moves to embrace Maddie. Sometime after in prison, we can see Danny T is about to meet a visitor. Expecting his lawyer to update him on Broker's death, he's shocked to see Broker sneering at him instead. He warns him about the consequences of what he has done and promises to be waiting for him outside.